We received some information in regards to remote airstrip funding that we were successful for Ralston and Springshore airstrips. I'm not aware that we received any notification yet in regards to not doing the infrastructure pipeline funding. There has been some delays and I'm not sure if we've been indicated a, a date at this point in time when we will be notified of success or otherwise of our applications. We're very fortunate this so many opportunities to source funding at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then number 62, you've actually got Kimberly Senior as the as the second officer um, on that one. Prioritisation of the projects list is suitable to councillors in the LT. Um, Kimberly's not working. Really, you know, but you know, and that amendment. So, any other questions in relation to those meeting actions? Welcome, Councillor Daniels. Um, if not, we might just move on to material personal interest, conflict of interest, personal gifts and benefits. Have we got anything to declare? Madam yeah, Chair, we just declared interest in that discussion regarding the particular piece of the site. Petitions, Mr. Okay, we move on to committee recommendations and notes. The juicy part of today. So, from the Goa River excavation project, oh, this is exciting for us. So, I'm really happy to throw you on this one. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, also, I just wish to bring you the good news. 
Uh, after four years of blood, sweat, and tears, we finally got the project complete. Um, and the work's complete. And uh, the positive of it is that the third extension of time was pretty brutal because we did not accept this project by April. Um, we were to do some grant funding. So as it stands currently, I just want to advise you that uh, the project will be delivered within its budget. Um, and the loss of the, the grant funding, on the, which is to the value of 142,500, will be fully acquitted um, well before the 30th of April deadline. And um, the only recommendation I'm seeking from you is uh, um, getting um, a, uh, a ratifying our actions that we took in terms of getting access to that land. Um, to stop all all the excess material and um, to ensure that the project was time, completed timely and that the acquittal would occur. Uh, is there any other? I don't think there's anything else to add to that. Any questions, Council? Straightforward. That the recommendation is there, and that is that Central Miles Regional Council Finance and Standing Committee receive the report and ratify the actions taken to expedite the project to ensure timely completion. Completion of full acquittal grant funding. Anyone happy to do that? Move Council Grimble Power, second with Council Roth. All in favour? Ms. Kerry, thank you. Oh, oh. 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 a high hand. Oh, you good job. So, um, so moving on, the uh, next uh, item for discussion is the Michael Sewage Treatment and Irrigation Upgrade. Um, so, um, Oh, so myself the plan today and just put it straight to uh, Peter Manning to uh, give you an update as to where we at for that uh, project and the fact that uh, yes there is a bit of uh, additional funding given that uh, we've not been able to market this um, and uh, we've got some early tenders from the Hunter Street with which you can tell to us what, what we need to complete. This okay, so councillors, uh, we went out to tender for what is going to be the first stage of extending the irrigation areas for the headlines in the sewage treatment plant. So this stage um, covered in this tender was to extend the irrigation area at the STP site, which includes getting rid of um, some stockpiled biosolids that have been there for a number of years. Um, putting a storage tank, pumps and irrigation system at the um, northern area of the Hunter Street Sport Complex, so that's the area behind the fields, um, and putting a control system on the uh, pumping main to allow diversion between Hunter Street and the, the current um, pond at the golf course. So we went out to tender late last year. We received seven tenders that ranged from uh, in round numbers, 500,000 to 1.5 million. Um, so quite a range for the, the um, same scale of work. Um, it appeared some of the contractors, um, the, the control system part of the work was what they struggled with pricing a bit. Um, and that was, comes quite uh, well, a reasonable part of that cost. Um, so those tenders were evaluated on um, so commercial conditions, relevant experience, uh, the technical uh, demonstration that they could do the job. Um, from the weightings from that, the uh, recommendation is to go with what is the second lowest tender um, in Q Water Services, which is the 845,000, um, and that they have demonstrated experience with similar type works. They're based in um, Mackay, so they've done effluent. Um, Recycle water irrigation systems, ponds, pumping systems. Uh, so that's the recommendation to go with them to get this work underway. Yeah. So, Councillor Rothschild. Yeah, look, um, so there wasn't anybody more local. More local. Um, oh, Active Civil, um, mm. uh, Emerald Base, and they were uh, over a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I think one of the, uh, like the Metro, I think it might have been Gladstone, so there was nobody that was very local, etc. Because that, that would be the question asked. Yes. Why is that local? It's okay. It becomes yeah, the, the waiting on, yeah. is it worth the extra mm. to be very local? And Peter, like, obviously we've had quite a lot of conversation you know, prior to today about this particular project and the, the, the requirements that we have to, um, to get rid of this airport in order. Um, I know at stage two, we'll, we'll, that's to come, and that'll, that'll be sort of the 17, 18 financial year. Yes. I just wanted to, if you could just reassure us about the fact that we are talking to the environmental regulators and that they're comfortable with our program. Uh, we have submitted um, an amendment to the TEP last month. Yep. Uh, we kept the conversation going and they you know, came back with questions on it to, to change it, which is obviously not a, no, we're not going to approve it. They, we explained that the process for going, the delays from you know, the golf course going into administration that caused us to have to do a pause and read things. So they seem reasonably happy with that. Yeah, so At least the, the local branch who are making the recommendations on those approvals. So that's all just verbal reassurance at this stage from nothing? Yes, well, okay, we have submitted our amendment application and they haven't come back and said, no, they've said, could you change this, could you change this? So, no, that's a, a good sign. Yeah, that is a good sign. Any other questions, councillors? Uh, all right, so the recommendation is there. I won't read it all, it's quite wordy. It's a table in there as well. But basically, it is the Central Miles Regional Council award the tender 2016T108C, Blackwater Sewage Street Upland Upgrade, Irrigation Upgrade to NQ Water Services for $845,370, excluding GST. Move, Council Roll. Second, the Council of Rural Cave, all in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you very much, Pam. Okay, still in your area, Gerard, we are moving into the principal cycle network priorities risk maps. Thank you, John. Um, Tracy, I'll do the intro, but uh, Jason uh, was more intimately involved with uh, the other different routes that were considered. Um, I just wondered actually when I read the report, if you and Nick Kimberly actually wrote, you know, tested it, put it on the ground. Test. Not this is on the road. In your library. Um, just to introduce the background in, uh, through the chair and councillors is that uh, um, the state government obviously adopted the Queensland Cycle Strategy 2011 to 21. Uh, with a vision of more cycling, more open, on safe, direct, connected routes. Um, Central Islands obviously uh, took part in uh, the development of this uh, the underpinning principal cycle network plans and prioritisation of routes and development of investment programs, which hasn't happened yet, but essentially we're fully part of it, which is to be applauded. Uh, people don't tend to think that people in central Queensland enjoy cycling, but uh, I think this council does show some level of commitment to active lifestyle and uh, um, uh, cycling as a means to commute. There are actually council employees that cycle to work, um, which is admirable. Um, the purpose of this uh, uh, report is really to get council to endorse our uh, recommended changes at this workshop uh, with Jason and Mick and, and uh, uh, Queensland Government's uh, Transport uh, Active Transport Unit. Um, really, just to get the, those endorsed, and uh, this will then also lend support to our recent application for bikeway funding, um, and that's why this report is a bit. This is a bit. Most of us not being it uh, earlier, but basically we do need this uh, endorsement to make sure that we get fair consideration of our funding application for that $2 million towards our pipeline uh, program that supports this plan. And that's probably in a nutshell. Any questions about the maps? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, oh, I just have a question about um, are they on road lanes or will they always be off road? Like, so the well, just to touch base, the point of address on the main road is the only road in the development of the association with councils. Mm -hmm. So in 2009, that's a school did a fantastic report, generated the original pin, a business cycle network for CHRC that it sits in the priority infrastructure plan and did a fantastic job. There's no modification or removal of any of those routes available and actually inclusions of high and moderate routes as well. So particularly in Blackwater, where Blackwater only had one route actually identified, and Capella only had one route identified. So the change table is probably the critical part of the report. The actual lanes can vary. It depends upon the traffic volume, the geometrics of the area, whether it's a lane within the actual roadway, or whether it's a designated 2.2 metre path or above 2.2 metre path. It depends on where it is. During the discussions, for example, when we did the workshop in August with um, Queensland Transport and Main Roads, we mentioned about, for example, Summer Road. So there's a lot of cycle use out of Summer Road. They flag, but unless there's a, a um, concentrated effort to, to create funding in a partnership with Queensland Transport and Main Roads, it's not likely that a designated road widening allowing for a lane to create utilisation, safe utilisation would actually take place. Um, what Gerard said about the funding special put together by Jamie and Mark Hill, um, this needs to be endorsed. It's not a, not a support, but it's not endorsed. Um, the application doesn't go anywhere. Um, so I just want to bring Council's attention to the actual change table more than the map, because the map I think highlights the high priorities. Um, previously we had no other routes identified within our towns um, by virtue of what Queensland Transport Main Roads are aware of. So the change table is probably the important one to take note of solving the report. Mm -hmm. so, a lot of work done in this space and as you, as you mentioned, Jason, important that we have this uh, ticked off for the work that Jane is doing um, in the other space. So, councillors, any other questions, Gerald? Um, just to add to what uh, uh, Jason said, uh, the investment plan in terms of that infrastructure we plan to invest in, uh, uh, this submission we've done for the two million, that is all, all for our chair um, parts, but I believe the investment plan to sit on the premise, it will distill what is off road, what is on road, and what the investment cost is. So that's yet to be developed. I haven't got time. No. Okay. So, uh, uh, yes, one can, you can read it if it's not on the townships, it's highly likely it's provided as on road, or will be developed or considered as on road. Uh, anything within the town, uh, any township precinct. Beyond the on road walk, uh, but we'll have to uh, develop that investment plan um, and clearly articulate whether we keep going on that path. But as I say, this submission for two million is specifically on that all road Okay, thank you. Awesome. All right, anyone uh, have any other questions? Is someone happy to move a recommendation? Move Councillor Daniels. Councillor Lord, do you have a question? Thank you. What have you done? What have you done? Senator Councillor Rob, all in favour? It's your name. What a relief. Thanks, Thank you. All right, so moving on to corporate services. A lot of work being done here. So, planned vehicle capital replacement program, 1670, and 10 year replacement program review. So, welcome to the desk, Margaret Gap. There's a lot of work on this. I'm going to introduce Margaret Gerard. Oh, sorry, Jason. Thanks, Madam Chair. Council has just followed on from our discussion yesterday afternoon at the Strategy Forum regarding the current situation with Council's plan vehicle and the change in philosophy that we're seeking to adopt in taking a more commercial approach and how we might proceed. What you see before you for adoption is a replacement program starting from this financial year that seeks to address those issues that we've discovered through the utilisation review uh, where um, without justification low use items you know, will be disposed of and the other plant equipment will be reviewed for its you know, relevancy and use 
um, given the current condition of the maintenance costs that have been incurred uh, over recent times. Uh, as has been recognised by the Chair, significant work has gone into this from across the organisation in getting us to a point where we've analysed what we own and the current situation of the plant and vehicle. And uh, I might ask uh, the manager, asset management just to talk to um, particularly the capital replacement program and the work that's gone into that. Um, and then happy to take questions obviously along the way, Council. Thank you, Jason, and through the Chair and to the, to the councillors. Um, the policy presented today in the asset management plan that supports the tenure replacement uh, policy, tenure replacement strategy is based on um, Institute of Public Works and Engineering Australia plus also some benchmarking uh, comparisons that we've done with 22 other local governments. Uh, it supports the optimal replacement to make sure that we're focusing on those um, items that need replacing in an optimal um, time frame and also minimising the cost of operations and maintenance within council to make sure that um, also that there's a correct timing of the replacement and focus plus also um, ensuring that we get our efficiency objectives. As well, the 10-year replacement strategy also looks at um, our ability to be able to self-fund, considering over the last three to four years, we have uh, generated approximately $17 million worth of um, utilisation income uh, with an approximately $10.5 million worth of um, expenditure leaving a balance of funds to be able to continue to replace our items as they come up. We've also, um, over the last 18 months or so, done a considerable amount of effort in terms of scrutinising the utilisation, not only timesheet hours but also actual use, to actually understand what it actually looks like. We're also proposing that we um, establish a plant and vehicle steering committee, which will actually continually look at the parameters that we're putting forward in the plan and the policy to make sure that there is a whole organisation approach to um, um, establishing and also making sure that we continue with those utilisation parameters and also the replacement. And um, the actual plant and vehicle steering committee uh, will be a cross-section of um, operational managers from council and also um, um, Jason Bradshaw as the um, general manager of corporate services. I think that's probably about it within the actual asset management plan. It contains all of those specific parameters that we guide our replacement and the policy um, confirms that and the objectives within the policy and we're seeking 2.2 million the remainder of this financial year and the 10 year replacement program um, looks in the order of a quantum of about $5.7 million for uh, each year for the next 10 years. Uh, that's based on replacing like for like. Um, each um, year we will scrutinise very carefully what we actually do replace. So that 5.7 million may not actually be spent every single year over the next 10 years, but it's there um, as an available fund. So the recommendation is there, Council. Is there any discussion on, on that, Council? Through you, Chair, to Jason, just um, on the, the return on return to council on the written down value. Um, if you, if over ten years you're replacing equipment or plants, that return return on um, will be greater on some things than on some plant than others. Yep. So, um, is it still? Is it still based on a, a new plant <coughs> will have, surely have a great return? So it's this this return of five percent. Is that just is that just an average figure or what? It is. Happened? Yeah, uh, through you, Madam Chair, it is a weighted average figure because, as you point out, we would do it on a plant by plant basis. What we're trying to collect is a weighted average across the total value of the fleet. I think if you looked at those ratios inside the plan on page 12, um, the easiest way to recognise, you know, particularly the spend that the manager referenced to 5.7, is that asset sustainability ratio at the bottom of page 12. Um, you will note that you know the annual depreciation is about four million dollars there, but we're saying the spend is 5.7. That's recognising the current state and 
a period of years where we haven't chosen to replace plant equipment. So yeah. now we're trying to accelerate that over a period of time. What it doesn't show us, guys, is that if we choose to not replace um, particular items of plant, then obviously that will change the equation um, as we work that through the organisation. But effectively, you know, the philosophy is aimed at trying to make sure what we have we properly utilise within the bounds of what we've got. If we can't utilise it within those ranges, um, and there's some mechanical issue, then we need to dispose of the machine and then just address its fit for purpose use going forward. But we need that machine or a different machine going forward. A lot of that comes back to what we talked about yesterday as well around um, work practices and work that the um, infrastructure will do. And, Looking at uh, you know other efficiencies in the way the business runs, uh, you know this is a moving um, feast, for want of a better term, Madam Chair. I mean, what we're saying is, a point in time, this is what we need to do now in terms of putting some certainty around the work that we do. Um, it will take you know some time to realise the efficiencies that we're looking at here, but we're hoping to do that you know over the next financial year or so, so that we can start to generate those efficiencies and particularly the maintenance costs this financial year um, have blown out and that's really been a, an alarm I suppose to address the, the longevity of some of the machines that we have uh, in the fleet. And looking at the age of the machines it's going to take us the 10 years to, to actually get it to reduce the age of the machines anyway so. Thank you, Jason. And just in relation to the recommendation itself, the number three approved reducing cost of 2.2 million to 16 to a year. That that's, needs to be It's not quite right, is it? No, because that's right. it's got to come to be that's a, right. yeah. review. It, it, it should be, it should be no. um, so consider the additional budget of 2.2 um, in budget review two. Mm -hmm. So if we could just amend that, I only might need some more. So 2.3 should read, consider the additional budget of $2.2 million in the budget review to 2016-17 for the duration. Yep, I'm comfortable with that. So, Councillors, any other questions? Yeah, through the Chairman, um, Margaret and, and Jason, I mean, can you just run through, I mean, to, to, to bring this Report today. I mean, if we've got to pick a date, so we've got to get some relativity about where we start and, and how we progress. I mean, um, are we confident that, that, that starting with you know 568 pieces of plant, that, that um, where we start now is reflective of our policy in terms of what we're going to do in terms of our, our road works and our balance of contracted works to, to works we do? Are we confident that we sort of you know, that we get, if we start now, that um, the configuration of our, 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 our fleet is where we need it to be, or is that going to be part of the work that we're going to sort of iron out over the next 12 months? I'd suggest that that's what we'll be doing over the next 12 months through our Plant and Vehicle Steering Committee. Yes. Um, uh, we've done a quick desktop and have asked the managers to identify items that they feel would, they'd be comfortable to dispose and not replace and obviously not having an impact on uh, capital works or maintenance um, for the, um, in the near future. But um, the whole purpose of the policy, or one of the purposes of the policy and the plan is to scrutinise that, to make sure that we do have a fit for purpose plan for our future works and for our maintenance um, regime. Well, I think that's very important to us because, you know, it, it, it would be, uh, you know, we would be cavitating if we'd come back in six months' time and still playing with what we have. Uh, I see that, for instance, yesterday, you know, the, the crushing plant, I suspect that the quarry uh, has a, a new value of 14 million and a written down value of 12 million. So the argument would be, uh, in effect, that that piece of uh, capital hasn't actually been written down very much over time. Um, and if there's a different strategy about how we approach the quarry, then perhaps, um, you know, those important sort of uh, decisions might reflect on just what you might do, which has a significant impact on on value of, uh, that, that applies to an annual right I suppose. So, so taking into account what Jason just said, you know, uh, case by case basis, I think in that six months we'd really like to see an, an analysis of some of those, you know, individual sections and areas where those pieces of machine are working uh, to get a real efficiency sort of a, uh, not, not necessarily this, a decision, but a real look at. Um, you know those significant pieces of infrastructure before we sort of start down on a on a uh, I suppose that 
uh, comfortable 10-year um, sort of projection cycle that we can get ourselves into as long as we've got the right start, as long as we've got the right basis to kick off with. So. Uh, the plant, plant vehicle steering committee uh, report that alone internal within the organisation, you don't need a, that to be part of a recommendation today, that's just... Yesterday the strategy we discussed, it's just been um, internal, yeah. but there was also a suggestion from Council Nixon and also from, um, from Demir that uh, we could potentially look in the near future for having an external uh, um, representation, somebody from the private sector within the region that has got significant experience and understanding yeah. of in particular a large plant. Uh, so um, I would be suggesting that in the first in the first while that we would we need to get our own stuff in order per se uh, before we sort that external um, participation. Yeah, no, that's really good. And the man makes really such an important point about getting the fundamentals right before we move forward. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose we would really um, through the self-made grading roads and everyone. You know, worked very hard to get it where it is now. So, yeah, you know, it might be a little more tweaking, I guess, but yeah, I, I think it's a great, great idea having that internal committee and the, the suggestion that others might be involved at some point is also um, here as well. So, any other questions, councils? Recommendations there? Um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah, that. Madam Chair, just on the recommendation, if, um, in number three, can you take out? The second B, just 2.2 million in budget review to for Oh, yeah, thank you. That's not what I'm hearing now, but it's oh, the second B. I'm going to put <laughs> that recommendation. <laughs> First councillor roll, second to the councillor will come all in favour. It's unanimous. Fantastic, Ms. Goldberg. Thank you very much. Well, all right, Councillors, we are we're moving through this agenda at a rate of not. Michelle Webster, can I uh, hand to you to talk about the Regional Airport Development Conference? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this report relates to a Regional Airport Development Forum to be held in uh, Sydney on, on the 20th to the 22nd of March. Uh, the report before the committee today for consideration um, is in regards to um, authorising Councillor Lacey, who is the chair of the Airport Advisory Committee, uh, to attend uh, that conference. Um, it is noted in the report that I've been approved to attend that conference myself by the, by the CEO. Uh, our manager of airport was going to attend the conference, but he is not now due to uh, workload and um, project issues that, that need to be dealt with. He wants to be a panellist. Uh, but unfortunately, he's needed to pull that out. So, um, the report for you is to authorise Councillor Lacey's mm -hmm. Councillors, um, the, the recommendation is there before you. Does anyone have any comment about this particular recommendation? Uh, through the Chair, I mean, did, did you want to actually name a, a, maybe someone else as well, guest Councillor Lacey, so I'm unable to attend? I mean, is it only because it's necessary that we send everyone through the chair? I'm just saying that $7,913.90 is a yes. significant cost. And to be expensive. honest, if, um, if everyone's happy, I'm, I'm happy that Michelle go and represent the organisation. I'm not sure that's necessary to send a second person. I, I also agree. It's a very expensive conference. Through the chair, generally airport matters are not cheap. Yeah. Um, you know, national conferences, all their events. This one in particular, I didn't attend a national conference, David, um, David did, and also Councillor Lacey did attend that conference. Uh, this this conference so um, um, is quite good. I've attended this previously, so, so yeah, I see value in that, certainly from my perspective. Yeah, 100% support uh, your attendance, Michelle. Um, I'm just questioning whether it's relevant even to send uh, yeah, this second person, and in this case, um, Council Lacey. Has anyone else got any comment? Well, move it and then later on, and then we'll. Well, do people want to send another person? Yeah. Yeah. 
you, you'd rather resolve this before you do it. Yeah. I think right. you've got to resolve this regulation before you have it. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, look, look, on that basis, I, I think that um, through the chair, I mean, I, I'm happy to put the chair here. I think that perhaps that, uh, this is very expensive. Uh, there is some guidelines in here. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, council about that. Not, not disputing the, the value of it, uh, but certainly uh, I'd be happy for the uh, general manager to attend and certainly uh, bring that benefit back to council. So mm -hmm. I'd be happy with that. So, a bit of guidance, Mr. CEO, but with the recommendation as it stands, do we just resolve not to support the yes. recommendation? Is that all we do? Yes. Yeah. Um, and do I need to? It's just resolved. Is it? Yep. So we move that. The recommendation not to support it. Yep. All right. So we're moving that the recommendation not be supported. Moved by Councillor Rimmelcombe. Seconded by Councillor yeah. Roth. All in favour? Yeah. You know, thank you very much, Councillor. Um, moving on to, and um, again, with Michelle Webster. Um, Just to make all the Yep. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Nadine. What sort of an interest are you declaring, Mr. Mayor? Um, there's a, a perception of interest. To see conflict of interest. Thanks very much. Well, I just have that moment. Um, and Mayor's left the room. Cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank just you very much. Just to chair, pause. Being a involved purchaser of cattle in, at the South Yards, is that? No, it's not a involvement as well, is it? Because we... Isn't that just a general a public? Because um, that would exclude um, all of us all. No, I can't. No, no, no. no. It buys the public. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So you can't right. state those it's please. Good. It's all good. All I can leave the room. <laughs> 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 I'm certainly comfortable with you remaining in the okay. council right now. Looking around, others are supporting that as well. So, um, so if you're comfortable, I'll yeah. hand okay. back to Michelle to just um, talk us through this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> um, so the report before the committee today is uh, for the inclusion of two additional fee structures within the sale yards fees. Um, I will make the note that sale yards fees are commercial fees, not regulatory recovery fees. Um, so we can charge beyond just a, a, a cost of recovery uh, fee. So um, councils will be aware with the changes to the tick line uh, that provided um, um, opportunity for the sale yards following approach from stakeholders. Um, government representatives as well as stakeholders of the sale yards in regards to the provision of tick inspection services at the Emerald Sale Yards. That was a matter discussed with the Emerald Sale Yards Coordination Committee and there was agreement in regards to that as a service that we do uh, desire to operate from the sale yards um, to provide that service to our safe stakeholders but it's also a service in regards to um, animal welfare, um, not necessarily making animals uh, cattle travel unnecessarily. So we need a fee structure around that. So we have um, made provision for third party operators to operate out of this IELTS infrastructure. And I'm proposing to council that they pay a minimal annual fee for the ability to do that. Um, our agents do pay an annual fee. The fee proposed is nothing like the annual fee that agents pay, which is around $1,500 per year. Um, and in addition, we also have our own staff um, going through the process to be um, um, assessed, certified. So we have one staff member at the moment who's completely certified. We have another staff member progressing through that. It's not necessarily uh, our, our intent at this point at the Emerald Sale Yards to be the sole provider of those inspection services. We're happy for third parties to operate there. But uh, if we are required to provide that service, we need a fee, um, fee around that. So the fee that is proposed in regards to the ticket inspection is uh, based on, and you'll see a number of fees there, Monday to Friday, outside after 4 p.m., Saturday and Sunday. We need to structure it that way in regards to our awards and what we have to pay our staff. So 
um, and, and that, that's why it's a little bit complex in that regard. So the fees there per hour are, are based on a labour and, and labour overhead cost recovery. Um, plus we're, we're um, incorporating onto that plus 55 cents, um, which is inclusive of GST, per head of cattle. So um, that provides a component for the facility component as well as some um, uh, profit margin uh, within that because we are a commercial business. We are very mindful in regards to the fees that we do charge. Um, it is a facility well utilised by, by our rural communities and uh, so we're always quite mindful in regards to the fees that we charge. In addition, we've set some fees there for advertising. So um, the Sale Yards Committee did consider an advertising strategy which was adopted by the Sale Yards Committee. We have a number of fixed advertising signs uh, that are displayed around the Sale Yards. Uh, we're not receiving revenue from that and when we trace back history, we were receiving some revenue some years ago. Um, that wasn't continued on. Um, but it, it is a commercial business. If you're advertising there, I think it's only right that you are paying the fee for the benefit of doing that. We do have circumstances there, for example, a one business advertises a sign which was put up in, in, in exchange for some work that occurred at the sale yards. I'm not someone who supports that type of approach. We should be paying for the services we get from other businesses rather than providing advertising opportunities and, and, and that. So this is also about sorting that arrangement of the advertising that's there, cleaning it up, making it equitable, all good if you want to advertise, but let's be equitable about it. The fees that are proposed there for councils for, for the committee's consideration are based on an independent value valuation undertaken by Taylor Burn. So they've been structured in, in, in that regard in that regard. So happy to take any questions. Through the chair and Michelle, you'll um, establish a plan of where the advertising will be. So there's yes. like a maximum amount of advertising. Um, that will be in place. Yes, Councillor Daniels. The, the strategy does sort of identify the areas that we do want advertising. There currently is some advertising on some of the pens which need to be removed. Uh, one of those is next. Some of those are council signs. Uh, another one is an external uh, party, third party business. Um, that presents a problem should a worker within that pen need to climb the fence. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at those things and we'll provide some opportunities. We don't, you know, we obviously we don't want it everywhere. Um, but, you know, being mindful of that. Yeah. Okay. So, that, so the decision around where it will be located and, you know, premium spots and so on, will that sort of be done in consultation with the Star House Generation Committee or is it something that yeah. we've already discussed? Yeah, we do have an advertising strategy that has been, which gave us some basis in around, you know, we have, we may have a bull sale, for example, but then, then there are some displays of businesses. So there's no sort of governance around those sorts of things. So it's about tidying that up so that, you know, we've got clear guidelines in regards to what we'll accept and what we won't accept. And I'm, I'm like noting the complicated fee structure around the tick inspection services, just a query more than anything, but the third party um, tick providers, which we know do exist, um, when, and obviously they don't, they don't, they can operate in a different environment than traditionally, yeah. so their fee schedule's not going to look like this. No, but which would have, I guess, made it quite difficult to come up with something that doesn't be seen to undercut or undermine what exists now, but rather enhance yeah. a service that, that is about, that, that under the changes to the Biosecurity Act allows this activity to occur across the region now. So I'm just questioning, you know, I guess, how, you know, the thinking around some of the pricing. So for me, Madam Mayor, it's, it's um, I appreciate the third party providers and the fees that they make they may structure, uh, that is their business. Um, um, it's quite clear to me from the Emerald Sale Yards Coordination Committee that we're not necessarily in a position to want to compete with that business. So um, I could put forward to you, and as a council officer, I need to put forward to you a, a business fee in regards to the operation for that service to operate out of the sale yard, um, not necessarily to put somebody else out of business or to charge such ridiculous well, high fees that um, 
that business will not come to the sale yards because we also need to understand there's also a flow on benefit in regard to dipping revenue. Mm. So, um, and we have a situation at the sale yards, you know, through, through council's adoption and through its all budget policies, that now all profits from the sale yards are returned to the sale yards for improvements and upgrades. So, we're, I'm very mindful in putting the fees forward to council um, in that consideration, trying to balance that in between, I think. So I think what I've put forward to you um, is a, a full cost recovery in regards to labour, um, some profit component, not over the top, but you know, I fully understand the political discussion um, and the role of councils in regards to that community discussion around what that fee may be. And so these I hope that answered your question. Yeah. These, these fees will, will remain in place until our next budget? Uh, yes, and uh, I believe Jason might be able to tell me the time frame, but perhaps around May, Council may receive a report in regards to the fees and charges scheduled for the 17 18 year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I guess there will be another opportunity to fix these if we need to. Reading the report, I understand you've been very thorough in the way this is structured, and as you say, we have some limitations around the awards uh, that our employees are under. So, and I think that Amanda, just to add to it, uh, moving forward in regards to the structure of the awards, like have you ideally a preferred situation to say uh, to, is moving to like a local work area agreement, that type of arrangement, than what we currently have. So, we moved from a situation previously where we had. Contractors and we brought them in as um, changed that structure to council labourers. But um, yeah, so the awards that they work under are quite complex in regards for our charging regime. So it would be ideal to change um, uh, different um, 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 instrument in which we uh, our officers at say mm -hmm. to work under. That would be desirable. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, councillors? Um, just to comment, Madam Chair, that um, in consultation with Michelle, we we did look at the cost of um, that other providers were, were charging. So, um, but did say to Michelle that it had to be treated as a commercial business. So, so that's how we arrived at you know, Michelle arrived at the yep. fees. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Any other questions, queries, comments? Is someone happy to um, move the recommendation that's there? It's, well, I won't read it out. Yeah. <laughs> Moved Councillor Roll, seconded Councillor Daniels, all in favour? It's unanimous. Um, just someone want to get our esteemed mayor. <laughs> <laughs> you might fall asleep on the couch. Council, we're up to general business. Is there any general business? Anything anyone wants to raise? Any other discussion? If I may, please. Yep. Um, last, last week at the Capella CRG meeting, there was a um, concern raised about road infrastructure and the flashing lights, school flashing lights. Um, and then in a car park meeting that I had <laughs> downstairs, um, it was also Comet Love and the road at the Gregory Highway out here at the schools um, that required for safety reasons. Um, and Capella's main, it's not the highway, but it's the main road that goes to um, Thierry. And there's a school crossing there, but the schools are not on the road, but there's the crossing is across that arterial road. That, yeah, so, um, so the concern is that there's no flashing lights? There's no flashing lights. lights. Like there's none in those, and there's none in um, Common, there's none in Bluff. And they want to change the ones, Brad Weeks, the policeman yeah. was talking about, um, that putting up people at some bridges. And, and they're saying, oh no, the fashion lights up there. Mm. Yeah, so um, it needs to, for safety reasons, needs to come back to the flashing light on the airport side of St. Bridget's School. On the airport. 
spatial rights, sorry. So the issue is that there's no flashing lights. No flashing lights. No. And there's no flashing lights in Comet. Comet. Or yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, but then on. the second layer yeah. to that onion is that at, at St. Richard's, you, you well, see at St. Richard's, um, Catholic College has flashing lights. Hmm. But then, but then it's a 60k zone all the way from St so Bridget's right through, right, right through. through. Yeah. So, um, suggestion is that now the policeman from Capel and the police, you know, all the policemen went to a had a meeting on Joseph here yesterday, I think. Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. this morning, yeah. um, about traffic issues and. The policeman from Capel is actually going to come to that meeting. It's a talk tag. Yeah, yeah I, was just, I was just going to suggest the same thing. Perhaps yeah. this is an issue for the traffic yeah. advisory. It is. Yeah. So, but that, but I thought I'd raise it here so yeah. that it can, because we talked to Jason Acres about it, and he said, well, if it goes to the tag meeting and it becomes a Queensland transport issue, doesn't it? And so we can take it through to the roads and transport advisory group as well. Just yeah, that should be involved. Thank you. That group gets involved. Mayor Hayes, you're on that group, aren't you? Okay, you're on the table. Oh, it's on. It's a. Are you on that? Is it Jace? I never make that committee. I've heard of them demolished. But through the chair, I'm sorry, through the chair, I'm sorry, 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 i yeah, it's very bad. I just don't think yeah. it's so No, I'll, I'll, I'll just come back to you and talk to you and I'll ask you to Thanks for sharing, Councillor Ross. Be on a session. Just the parades. No, it's good to know because um, yes. yeah, it's an important regional safety issue. Any other general business? To the chair, I just want to know the, I think the interstate was the Sydney car park so I was just wondering if you could just update us on how that's going, the, the new car park yeah. on the far side of Rascals Road. It's commenced. I do know it's commenced, yeah. Madam Chair and Council. Um, I drove through there a week ago, so I actually have no idea how far they are currently. Um, I'll, again, I, I can get out uh, before. The next thing I'll get my staff to give us an update and uh, put it through as a update to all councillors if that's. But the, the state I feel very, very appreciative mm -hmm. of obviously that starting. And uh, yeah, uh, after I think five or six years I've been advocating for that, they're very appreciative of the work that you know, the council's mm -hmm. doing. That. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's a good result. Um, any other questions, queries, comments, things? No, well, if that's it, I will declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for at 9.24 a.m. and thank you all for your enthusiasm and contributions. Thank you to our live streamers. See you again.